In this video, I'll teach you everything you need to know to get started with the Mass Transit messaging library. We're going to configure Mass Transit completely from scratch, and I'll show you how to start publishing and consuming messages using the message bus. Let's start by installing the Mass Transit library, and along the way, I'm going to explain what Mass Transit is and why you should be using it in .NET. So I'm going to look for mass transit and you will see a lot of NuGet packages and the results. We're going to just install the core mass transit library. And from the description, you can see that mass transit brands itself as a developer focused framework for building distributed applications. And you will see that this is really true when we start using mass transit. But first, I want to give you a few arguments for why you should consider mass transit. Mass Transit provides a lot of useful abstractions on top of the supported message transport mechanisms and it really makes your life easier if you want to build distributed applications that use messaging. I'm going to highlight only a few of these and first of all I'm going to mention message routing because Mass Transit takes care of setting up the required broker topology on top of your messaging system. For example, this could be RabbitMQ or Azure Service Bus. Mass Transit will take care of setting up the required queues, topics, exchanges, and so on. It also has built-in support for dependency injection, and you can use the well-known programming model from ASP.NET Core. You can easily implement sagas and state machines, and it also supports the request response messaging pattern. Now, this is just a brief introduction into what Mass Transit does for you, but let's see how to configure Mass Transit in a .NET application and start sending and consuming messages. So we installed the Mass Transit library and I'm going to go back to my program file and start configuring the required services. I'm going to start by saying builder services and now we can call the add mass transit method. This method accepts a delegate that allows us to configure mass transit further. I'm going to start by configuring the endpoint name formatter. And I like to use the kebab case endpoint name formatter because it makes the endpoints more human readable. I'll talk about endpoints a bit more later, but for now, what you need to know is that endpoints are used to send your messages and then the messages will be routed to the appropriate consumers. I'm also going to configure the actual transport that we are going to use in this demonstration and I will use the in-memory transport, which I can configure by calling the using in-memory method. This endpoint also accepts a delegate, and I'm going to provide a delegate to configure my endpoints for this message transport. I'm going to say config, configure endpoints, and we're going to pass it the context variable that is part of our delegate. And this is the most basic way to configure mass transit in a .NET Core application. The call to add mass transit will configure the underlying services, and I'm additionally configuring the endpoint names, and I'm configuring to use the in-memory message transport. This message transport is very practical for local development, and even if you are building a modular monolith and you're working inside of a single process, but as soon as you start building a distributed system, you will have to replace this with a different transport for example, RabbitMQ, Azure Service Bus, or even the AWS Simple Queue service. And the best part about using Mass Transit is that you will not have to change anything about your programming model. Your message publishing and consuming code remains unchanged, irrelevant of which message transport you are using under the hood. So let me show you the Mass Transit abstractions that make all of this possible. I'm going to introduce a new class inside of our solution, and this will be a background service that's going to be our message publisher. It's going to inherit from the background service class and we're going to implement the execute async method. I will add just one dependency to our message publisher and this is going to be an iBus instance. And this is an interface from Mass Transit. So let's go ahead and inject this from the constructor. If you are running on .NET 8, you can even use the primary constructors feature and I'm going to show you how that would look like. Instead of having a private read-only field and a constructor, we can just create a simple primary constructor and use the bus instance that will be provided with dependency injection. I'm going to make our method asynchronous and inside of it, I'm going to say while stopping token cancellation requested or rather while the cancellation is not requested, we're going to do two things. I'm going to use my message bus to publish a message and any consumers interested in consuming this message can subscribe to it. The next thing I'm going to need is going to be a message instance and I can even use an anonymous type 
and publish this using mass transit. Let's give our message a value property. And what I'm going to do here is just say the current time is and let's provide a value of date time UTC now. The second argument here is a cancellation token. So let's provide that. And after publishing my message, I'm going to say await task delay, and I'm going to await for 1000 milliseconds. We're also going to pass in the cancellation token to this method call. And now let's go back to our message that we are sending using mass transit. Anonymous types aren't very useful and most of all, they aren't maintainable in the long run. So what I'm going to do is to define a type that will represent my message. Mass transit recommends that you use either a class, a record or an interface to define your messages. So for example, let's go with a record. We're going to give our record a name. So let's call it the current time. And the suggested way to define your properties is by creating an explicit property instance. So I'm going to create a public string value property and I will give it a get and an init setter. Optionally, I can give it a default value of an empty string. And now I'm going to update the message I'm publishing here to be an instance of the current time message. Let's also move this into its own file. And the main reason why mass transit suggests that you define an explicit setter on your properties of your messages is because of serialization and deserialization when publishing over the message bus. Having a public setter makes this a non-issue, so this is why it's the suggested approach. If we go back to our background service, or rather the message publisher, what it's going to do is publish a current time message to any interested subscribers, and then it's going to delay the execution for one second after which it's going to publish another message that the subscribers can consume. And then the next component we need is a message consumer. So let's add a new class in our project and let's call it the current time consumer. In this class, we have to implement the iConsumer interface, which is an interface from mass transit. And we have to specify what is the message that we are consuming. So in this case, it will be the current time message. And this interface has one method, it's called consume and it gives you access to the consume context containing our message type. If we take a look at the consume context, you can see that we have access to the message property, which contains the current time instance, but there is also the cancellation token, the conversation and correlation identifiers that you can use to trace these messages across a distributed system. And this is very important for monitoring in distributed systems. There are a lot of other properties and methods on the consume context that I'm not going to get into, but let's see what we can do with our current time message. I'm going to inject another service here. There's going to be an iLogger of the current time consumer. Let's call it the logger and I'm going to use it to log the current time. So let's say logger, log information and let's create a message in this format. So I'm going to say consumer and then I'm going to provide the message content. For the first value, I'm going to say name of current time consumer so that we know what is the name of the consumer that is processing this message. And for the second parameter, I'm going to use the consume context to access the current time message. And we're going to pass in the message value containing the current time as the message that will be logged in our information log. Then I'm just going to return a completed task. And this is how we will implement our consumer. Now we need to go back to our program file and we need to do two things here. First of all, we need to tell mass transit about our consumer so that it can be configured on a specific receive endpoint. So I'm going to say bus configurator add consumer and I'm going to use the generic overload and pass in our current time consumer. Then I'm going to configure the background job by saying builder services add hosted service and I will add the message publisher as a hosted service. So now when I start the application, our background job is going to start running in the background and the consumer will start consuming the messages that we publish from the background job. Now I'm going to start the application and in the console, you will see that we will start consuming our messages. So you can see the message format here saying the current consumer, which is the name of our consumer instance, and is going to specify what is the current time. Now, if I go up to the other logs that contain some startup information, you can see a log from mass transit 
that is configuring an endpoint called current time, which matches the name of the message that we are publishing using the iBus instance, and it's configuring the consumer instance that will be subscribed when we publish this message. Now let me show you what happens when we introduce one more consumer. I'm going to copy the consumer that we already have, and I'm going to add a new class that will be called current time consumer version two. Let me update the name of operator here so that our consumer in the log changes. So now we have two consumer instances and we also have to register this with mass transit. So I'm going to say bus configurator, add consumer, and I will specify the current time consumer version two. Now, if I go ahead and start the application again, at the top, you will see that mass transit is configuring two endpoints, the current time and the current time consumer version two, which are linked to the respective consumer instances. Now, both of these consumers are subscribed to the same message type, which is why you will be able to see the logs coming from both of these consumers at the same time. Registering all of the consumers that you have in your application is a bit cumbersome, so there's a better way to do this if all of your consumers are inside of the same assembly. So you can call the add consumers method, which accepts an assembly instance or a list of assemblies. And now I can say type of program, for example, and pass in the assembly and mass transit will scan this assembly for any implementations of the iConsumer interface. And in my case, I have two consumers and register them as consumers with mass transit. Hopefully you can see how mass transit makes it easy to implement messaging in a distributed application. And I want to show you what changes when we introduce different message transports. Let's search for mass transit again, and I'm going to install mass transit RabbitMQ, for example. I'm also going to install the Azure service bus message transport, and I'm going to install the Amazon SQS message transport. And now if I go back to the program file, you will see a few additional extension methods appear on the bus configurator. And now I can say using RabbitMQ and configure RabbitMQ transport. I can also say using Azure service bus and configure my connection to Azure service bus. And lastly, I can say using Amazon SQS to configure my connection to SQS. And this is how you can change which transport you are using for publishing and consuming messages under the hood, while mass transit takes care of abstracting away the internal implementation details. If you want to see how to configure mass transit with RabbitMQ in a microservices environment, then you can watch this video next. Make sure to click the like button under this video, subscribe to my channel, and until next time, stay awesome.